So my mother was raised in that in that school, I think she's told the story too, and you know, and she went to the Real Gymnasium, which was like the, you know, the. Um, in terms of it wasn't rich, they didn't have any money, but they sure were fancy in terms of their educational aspirations and in terms of their ideals and in terms of what they were trying to accomplish. And I think they turned out the most astonishingly well-educated people because when later on when I met a lot of the people who were had been her her classmates just before or after her and you look at the level of education they managed to acquire just from that Graal Gymnasium without ever having gone on to do any more studies because for many of them the war interrupted it others did go on and became young professors you know uh, the Khan family and other families there were all kinds of families that then where people did manage to to go on and acquire more education, but just at that level of having finished the gymnasia, what they knew, their approach, you know, their capacity to, to do independent research. My mother, over the years, uh, prepared a lot of texts, prepared a lot of talks, hmm. but she wasn't the spontaneous sort. She needed to, to write everything down, but it was beautifully written. There's nothing extra in any of my mother's texts. There's no fluff. So my my mother grew up in, in that in that atmosphere. Her father, as I said, he was a teacher. He was a he was then a school principal. And during the summer, he was also a director of a camp for a summer. He worked very hard. I think the director of camp part was, I mean, he, it was something that was very much within his calling. But it was also very difficult. And so I think he worked very very hard. And my understanding is that he suffered from migraines as well. That he, and. Um, but he had to earn as much money as he could because being a Jewish a Yiddish teacher was not a way to make any money and they were actually very poor you know mm -hmm. and it took me a while it was only when I got older that my mother actually started talking she didn't she never went on about that when I was younger but it was later on that I started to realize to what extent how tight money was and how every little expense had to be thought through it was only once my grandmother started going to work and being was being a nurse uh, and brought in a little extra money that things eased up a bit. But it was very difficult, and of course it was the Depression. And my mother was born in 1923, so was uh, just a young girl during the Depression. And um, But from what I also understand, and from other people, it's not just my mother's story, uh, my grandfather was a really beloved teacher. He was, you know, he was strict, but he was kind, and he was fair, and he was very smart. and. And he was part of that cohort. That's the atmosphere my mother grew up in. I think that, that whole Vilna thing has been well documented, and there are people who have written about it a lot, so I don't think I need to tell you that much. But she was really in the heart of it, you know. And when she talks about her school and all the things they did, <coughs> you know, studying. And because they studied science and math and geography in Yiddish uh, and history, they had a complete command of the language. Their Yiddish was so rich because they did everything in Yiddish, you know. In addition to, I mean, they did Polish language and literature and history, but they, their life was in Yiddish, and it was this complete, and with a great um, emphasis on excellence and on, on, you know, language, so that it wasn't anything went. It, and if I can be allowed a little, it wasn't like the yeshivish that one hears now. It would, that would not have been tolerated. It wasn't like the kind of Yiddish I hear on the street in Montreal in certain areas where anything goes. You know, it was really that kind of determination to create a language that was going to be at the height of any other language. 